All right, hello, thanks for having me. Um, today, rather than talking about changing pixels on displays, which is what I spend most of my time talking about, I'm going to talk about something that's really rather quite close to my heart. Um, I'm going to talk about diversity and inclusion. It's a hot topic right now, and um, I used to talk a lot about equality and prejudice, but now I seem to be talking about this a lot more. So first question, what makes a good C++ programmer? These are personal characteristics, intellectual acuity, rigor, perseverance, nothing controversial there. Everyone could possibly have any of these characteristics, ideally all three, ideally in abundance to make be a good C++ programmer. But what's diversity? It's a range of different things, a mechanism of differentiation, representation from many groups. See, like fruit, did you get the picture now? Lovely. How is diversity different from inclusion? Diversity and inclusion often appear together, paired, as if they're the same thing, but they're not. Of course, they're not the same thing. Um, so inclusion is a way of thinking and acting. Universal acceptance. It's a means to achieve diversity, which I think is the most important thing. I think diversity is important. It's something we should aim for. But why? Why aim for diversity? Anyone here in hiring? One or two of you. Yes, I imagine the rest of the people hiring are at home, panicking. I don't know about you, but I'm finding it impossible to recruit. My pool of talent is tiny. I need a bigger pool of talent. One way to get a bigger pool of talent, encourage more people to jump in the pool. Preventing monocultural stagnation. Well, diversity of talent, it brings diversity of ideas and solutions. It prevents somewhere from being frozen in amber. It introduces dynamism. It's brilliant. But also, it's the right thing to do. It fulfills the golden rule of do as you would be done by. How would you like to be excluded for some arbitrary personal characteristic that you had no choice over? It is the right thing to do. This is why we should talk about diversity and inclusion. It's a horrible graph, isn't it? It's a horrible graph. I make computer games. I love making computer games. I love playing computer games. I'm 50 years old, and I love playing computer games. There, I've said it. <laughs> right now, I'm playing Cuphead. If anybody else is playing Cuphead, I'd like to know if you Yes, yes, it is driving me up the wall. Right, what happened in 1980? Home computers, that's what happened. Home computers were marketed at boys, boys who hung out in arcades, because home computers could play arcade games. Girls didn't hang out in arcades. Arcades were quite exclusionary, gladiatorial arenas of combat. So straight away, by marketing them as arcade machines in the home, boys bought them, girls didn't. That's what happened. Bad. Loss of women from the profession. But also, evidence of artificial barriers beyond stated recruitment aims. That's a fancy way of saying unconscious bias. Unconscious bias hits us all, and we don't realize it because it's unconscious. Humans habituate towards small groups. We attract the people, or we select the people, we choose the people who are like us, because that's the easiest way of relating. It's, it's very simple like that. In our personal lives, that's what we do. But that's not going to make groups diverse. That's not going to give you the breadth of experience that you're seeking. So what are the protected characteristics? So these protected characteristics are things that you may not discriminate against under European law. Age, disability, gender, gender reassignment, partnership status, sexuality, pregnancy, race, religious belief. Why is there a picture of William Shakespeare there? Well, as a side note, I was searching for images all through this, and I asked Google, just as a laugh, uh, for a picture of a pregnant black lesbian Muslim in a wheelchair. <laughs> Neural nets. This is the AI hype, OK? <laughs> what does the working population look like? This is Jessica Ennis. She is a British citizen. She has a Jamaican father and an English mother. One way of combating racism and promoting integration, start families. Start families with the newcomers. Just saying. 47% of the UK workforce are women. 
One in five of the UK working population are disabled. 36% of the UK population between 16 and 64 are not white British. I appreciate these are British statistics. I'll be interested in the European statistics if anybody can find them for me. But given this information, why is there such underrepresentation in the C++ community? No one? No, I don't know either. But it's clearly a problem that we have to solve. I personally, I personally know more trans female C++ programmers than black programmers of any language. That's, that's really curious for me. Who knows who this is? Oh, a couple of you. It's Mary Jackson, NASA's first black female engineer, subject of hidden figures. Lack of role models. That's one problem, isn't it? <sighs> Opaque access, not knowing how to get into the group. I'm on the C++ committee. It sounds very grand. It's not especially grand. Um, I didn't know how to get onto the committee, um, and I had to root around and find out quite a lot, and I joined my national body, and then I got my employers to say, yes, can you represent it, blah, blah, blah. I had to hunt about, and I had to decide it was something I could do as well. It wasn't immediately obvious. Absence of invitation is a serious problem. I wasn't invited onto the committee. I thought, no, I'm good enough. I can do this. Yes, me, 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 me. Listen to everything I have to say about C++ committee. It's brilliant. It really is. Mm. Look at my graphics paper. <sighs> I simply offered this talk. I just felt able to, but plenty of people don't feel able to make that move. They're totally capable, but they just don't feel able because they've been excluded all their lives. Invite people, please. <sighs> Apparent hostility. You know, poor experiences can create a belief of hostility. Of course they can. And it gets reported, and people say, well, that's a hostile place to be. And then people learn that it's a hostile place to be, and they tell other people, oh, that's a hostile place to be. There's one important thing that we need to do, and that's believe your first-hand accounts of hostility. When they become second-hand and third-hand accounts, temper your belief. Go for the original sources. Things get exaggerated. Things get misrepresented. But believe people when they say somewhere's hostile. See what you can do about it. We're all engineers. We rely on good process, good data, good evidence, not reports of evidence. <sighs> I suddenly realized ill-fitting t-shirts of my size is, um, this is actually, my wife is a data architect. She's very good at it. She went to a tech conference. She was off a t-shirt. Did they have a ladies' fit t-shirt? They did not. How did that make her feel? Excluded. Of course it did. No t-shirts for you, young lady. No, off you jolly well trot. And Sean, thank you for your point about guys. I actually have, obviously, a different relationship with the word guy, so I have a different response to it. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Who's that? Margaret Hamilton. Lead Apollo flight software engineer, she made up the term software engineering during the Apollo space mission days. Um, promote the idea amongst your employees. Talk about it. Take a lead. If you're a manager, tell your reports about diversity. Tell them how important it is to you. Just keep it, keep it visible. Set examples. Set expectations amongst your employees about diversity. Develop diversity-friendly policies. Same-sex spousal benefits. Be surprised how many companies don't offer that. Only extend be benefits to you know, married partners, not civil partners. That's a very bad thing. How about working from home and flexi time for new mothers? And also, if you're disabled, that's another benefit. If you're in a wheelchair and you're commuting to work on a, tra on a train, there's no guarantee that the train that you usually catch will actually be able to accept you, and you might end up late for work. You know, if I'm in a wheelchair, I can't guarantee you getting into your office door at 9 o'clock. I'll give you eight hours of my day every day with gratitude. But you've got to let me get there when I can get there. So flexi time. Telecommuting. Also good for disabled people. Good for lots of people. Enhanced maternity leave. It's not a problem. It really isn't. Make improvement of diversity a tiebreaker. If you have four candidates in front of you, and you think, well, they're all the same. I don't know how to choose. Now you do. Which one will improve your community most? Which one will enrich your pool of talent, the opinions that are put forward? We all know who this is, don't we? This is Alan Turing. 
he formalized the concept of algorithm and computation. In 1952, he was prosecuted for homosexual acts. In 1954, he committed suicide. In 2013, he was pardoned. He's a personal hero of mine. Where do you advertise? How do you broaden your recruitment advertising targets? In the UK, we have a magazine called The Voice. It's Britain's favorite black newspaper. I've never seen an advert for a programmer in there. We have another magazine called Gay Times. I've never seen a recruitment advert in there. Cosmopolitan. Nope. Why not? Why not? Reach out directly to your protected groups. Target the young. Who goes to schools? Who does outreach in schools? Mm. Well, that's a problem, isn't it? I go to schools and I talk about programming. I go in there and say, hey, I'm in games. I have their attention straight away. I appreciate that's a bit of an advantage. Nonetheless, you all have a passion for what you do. Go into the schools, talk to people. Don't just talk to the people who are pressing forward for attention. Talk to the people who are hanging back. Don't assume they're disinterested. They might be feeling excluded. They might be feeling uninvited. Make sure you talk to everybody. Make sure everybody feels welcome into this environment. This is a great community, you know. I get lots of help from lots of people all the time. We're a helpful bunch. Let's just extend it. I know what you're thinking. It's a fair question. Earlier this year, I took a pledge that I would not appear on an all-male panel. I would not serve on an all-male panel. That's a very hard pledge to maintain in the C++ community. And eventually, I had to say, all right, I will not serve on an all-male panel without drawing attention to it. So at ACCU, when I was asked to appear on Grill the Committee, and it was all chaps, I wore this T-shirt, which, if you can't read it, is a scene from Life of Brian where John Cleese says, are there any women here? Nice Monty Python reference for the computer programmers amongst us. I'm doing this because I can. I am exercising my privilege for the benefit of all, and I am delighted, delighted to do so. <laughs> Everyone should be considering diversity. A few months ago, I made a bit of a jokey tweet. Why isn't there a C++ diversity group called Hash Include? My wife said I should hash to find one. And then Kate Gregory, yes, Kate Gregory, our other keynote speaker, she said, yeah, let's make this happen. Oh, uh. <laughs> oh, now I'm on the spots. Now you're not so funny, are you? Simon Brand. Simon, there he is. Thank you, Simon. He created a Hash Include channel on CPP Lang Slack. I created a document to think about and he pinned it to the channel. People joined the channel and started discussing issues which impede diversity. Gents invited me here to speak. Here we all are. I need help. I really do need help. I'm a software developer. I'm not a politician. I'm not a diversity specialist. I'm not an academic. I'm a shouty bloke from Brighton, UK. That's what I am. I need all of you to help me with this. We all need to help each other with this. We all need diversity. We need a bigger pool of talent. We need more people. We need to do the right thing for all those people out there who could be joining us, but who don't feel that they can, who feel excluded. We have so many problems to solve as software engineers. Every day, we can and we do make the world a slightly better place, incrementally, little by little, little by little. Everything we do is solving a problem that somebody has. Think how much better a job we could make of it with more people helping us. So get out there, talk to your colleagues, talk to your managers, visit the schools, walk the walk, don't just talk the talk. Inspire the next generation to be bigger and broader and better than the current one. You know what to do.